Welcome to the fourth episode, uh, fourth podcast of the Hats Off Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Liam. And I'm Noah. And we're sorry that we took a week off. We want, <laughs> we're apologizing to our subscribers. It was a busy week for both of us. Uh, but this week is Usual Suspects. Um, one of the best movies, one of the best twists. Probably one of the one better. Of the best casts. Yeah. Um, one of the best um, twists, probably in, probably in film. Probably Brian Singer's best, and uh, which isn't saying much. Yeah. Um, I would like to say hats off to Chris McQuarrie, um, yep. the writer. Yep. I read about him. He used to be like a he used to be like a spy. Like he used to be like a um, an agent, and or like he was in the co- He was in like the police force, and then he was like something like a CIA agent or something crazy. So he before, had some, before yeah, before he, he like became, he became a writer. So like a lot of his stuff is impi- inspired by like yeah. real life events. So, which um, is also cause he did the last two mission impossibles. True. So he probably has true some experience there as well. Well, mission impossible. He did. He, he did. He did it afterwards. Cause after what? After this. Well, yeah, but like, I mean, well, probably his experience as like an agent. Or what whatever. was the first? What was the first Mission Impossible? And that come out? Well, no, he did. He he directed, um, Rogue Nation and Fallout. Oh, okay. And he wrote. Those. I thought he wrote the. Okay. I don't. I don't know if he's he didn't credit, write all of them. I don't, yeah, he just did like newer yeah. ones, which I mean, those are considered the better ones anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah, when I so after watching this, and I was like looking it up, like. Looking up the whole cast, looking up Brian Singer, who was the director, and looking up Christopher McQuarrie, who was the writer. It seemed like this movie came out at like a very early stages, a very early stage in all their careers. Yeah. Um, like this was one of Brian Singer's first movies yep. before all the X Men movies he did. Same with Christopher McQuarrie. Um, this was, we, and we talked about how like big of big Kevin Spacey was in the nineties. Yeah. But this was before American Beauty. This was before Seven. LA. This was the same year as Seven. But yeah, but the, did like, it come out? It came out before. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know. I don't know about the timeline, but either way, like he's still kind of a like a lesser known actor. Mm-hmm. So like, I do know that yeah. everybody in the in the cast took a pay cut to be able to do it. Yeah. So that also shows you how early on in the in his career Brian Singer was to be able to get this done, um, as well as everybody else that was involved with producing it. So. Um, overall lower budget. Yeah, I would, so well, yeah, I would say that I was I would assume that when this movie came out, it wasn't like looked at as like a hyped up movie with like big stars and like a like say like how Tenet was this year because like everyone knows Christopher Nolan mm-hmm. and he has a really good track record and um, but like since this was like Singer's first film, they probably there's probably some skepticism that this film was met with like before it came out. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say about, so it was $6 million budget, um, which is low, uh, even for the nineties, but yeah, the one thing I will say that I do know was part of their marketing campaign was they would say, who is Kaiser Soze? And oh, really? on, on TV, when they're doing the ads and in the newspaper, they would say, who is Kaiser Soze? And, and then at, after a certain point of, of marketing for the, like into the, into the summer, mm-hmm. I think it came out in, um. Yeah, August of ninety five. All right. So throughout the summer, they were just having all these who's who is Kaiser Soze ads. Like you know, he's like the biggest and the baddest um, yeah. person on the market. And so at the time, you know, in the nineties, there wasn't a whole lot of other outlets in terms of like, oh, let me just go read about this or like yeah. see a trailer. Like you see that okay, it's Kaiser Soze. I kind of want to know who the fuck Kaiser Soze is. Especially since like none of the characters are probably listed as Kaiser Soze. Right. You know, and exactly, yeah. So, and well, they didn't even have IMDb back then, so it's not yeah. like you could go say, "Who is it?" So, and, and, and uh, Seven came out after too. So, right, okay. So, how many months after? It came out late September. Okay, all right. So yeah, one of the, I mean, the main tagline for the movie is "Who is Kaiser Soze?" Yeah, and I mean that's, that definitely ones draws are, people in. Yeah, the other ones are five criminals, one lineup, no, no coincidence. Yeah. In a world where nothing is what it seems, you've got to look beyond. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. The truth is always in the last place you look, and the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled was, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, I think, yeah, this is, I, this definitely is a movie that I would I would, would have been interested in seeing, probably, if I was alive when it came out. You know? Yeah. I, uh, even, even, like, with, like, like a... 
not as famous director and writer and everything, I think I would have been excited to see this. Yeah, and if and we'll get to the part where we say like what we'd, we'd recast and how it looked today, but yeah. uh, I also think you wouldn't be able to do it, like you said, you know, because everybody has IMDb and everybody has more outlets to see things. Yeah. And like you know, like when Avengers Endgame was coming out. Yeah. Um, you could see like bef- like months before they even dropped it that they were shooting scenes in New York so you knew that they were at least going to either go back in time or whatever because yeah. there's so much skepticism about that in the 90s where you have newspapers and you have people communicating through phone like telephone and you know the dot com bubble wasn't even available yet it really wasn't that big so a lot of things you see were on TV and that was just about it yeah. so it's it was able to keep the the ambiguity of who the hell Kaiser Soze was, and people just wanted to know. Yeah, you know, after after being bombarded with so many ads for months, and it being in a prime weekend in in August in '95, I mean, it probably, um, I don't think it had a big opening weekend, but I know that it was in good shape in terms of overall release. I think it was up into the 200 uh, eventually. It opening weekend was 645,000. Yeah, so, that's that was the mess. <laughs> yeah. That's a failure. Like any <laughs> any studio that has anything less than a million. I mean, even at that time, it's just. I like, mean, but this was it. Who? What studio releases? You know. Uh, I want to say Paramount. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't like. It's not like a universe. It's not like a Avengers movie or like a Transformers movie. Like it's. I don't think it's. It's not projected to put up those types of numbers. Yeah. Like it's an original story. With original characters, right. it doesn't. It's not a remake of anything. It's not a sequel of anything. Not a prequel of anything. So like movies like that, like there are, they do run the risk of you know, of being a flop just because there isn't there isn't anything for audiences to go off of before that. So they just might be turned off by like one of the two trailers they've dropped, and that might That's true. deter them from going to see it. That could be it. Yeah. Um, I I, I also think that just nowadays, <laughs> plus with inflation, if we, too. yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, nowadays. Equally in that cast, I mean, they're all kind of early in their careers, like, um, the Baldwins were just starting out, and I'm pretty sure that this Baldwin, uh, Stephen Baldwin, didn't do much after this. Yeah, he, yeah, he didn't. Um, but everybody else, I mean, Chaz Palantari, obviously, he's coming off Bronx Tale, he's big, yeah. um, and then Benicio the Toro's early on, Kevin Spacey's early on, Gabriel Byrne, pretty early as well, Kevin Pollock, um, I'm pretty sure he was a comedian before. I'm not quite sure. He was good, man. Yeah, and he before that, I know he was in A Few Good Men, and yeah. um, that kind of gave him that, that level of fame, but other than that, everybody else is still pretty much starting out. John Carlo Esposito. Yeah, and uh, Redfoot, what's his name? The dude that played Redfoot. Yeah. Um, that eventually was in uh, Pulp Fiction two years later, or not a year before, so he at least had that recognizable yeah. face you know he was the dude that was with the gimp so oh oh yeah i don't know he was zed he owned yeah. the, he owned the shop like the the bike oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I haven't seen pulp fiction in a while um, yeah i'm gonna have to do that eventually <laughs> um yeah but i think i mean it's, it's a great movie i think it's told really well mm-hmm. i like how it's like a not a traditional storyline yeah kind of like your chris nolan memento type feel to it right um, I think it definitely, definitely the first scene draws or draws the audience in. Yep. With uh, you know, because you probably assume that Gabriel Byrne's character is gonna be like one of the main characters. Yeah. And you, spoiler alert, he uh, like you open up to him getting shot by a shadowy figure. Right. And then a doc blowing up. Yeah. So definitely a good opening scene in my opinion. Yeah. And the first time I saw it, and and I was like, okay, I I think I know who it is, but that scene where they go over it. And Chaz Palminteri really hates Gable Byrne. Like, he's trying to pin him down. Yeah. And he shows, he, he tells the story and puts it together a different way. Um, it really, it makes you think, oh, maybe Gable Byrne could be him. Because um, they put his face on the guy with the hat, with the hat and everything. Yeah. And fun fact, Gabriel Byrne thought the entire time when he were, they were shooting it, that he was going to be Kaiser Soze. Oh, really? So when he, when he when he finally found out, he just walked out of the room, like, pissed off. Like, oh, really? Yeah, he thought he was he thought he was him. So, he's, he's, he, it would have been, it wouldn't it wouldn't have, have had the same effect. Correct. You know? yeah. Like, I mean, that's, pro- yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, who would have thought of all people, it's the, it's the gimp. Right. 
Yeah. Which is the which is the, the best part of the movie. Right. And it, and it really does seem like yeah. Gabriel Byrne's character is trying to get out of the shit. I mean, he's been a like, criminal since he was a cop, for his, basically his whole life at that point. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, Chaz Palminteri's character knows what he's done. And he's going to keep him in that world. Um, and he can't really get out of it. And that's kind of why he was dating that, that lawyer, because at yeah. least he had that in his pocket. Yeah. But uh, I just, yeah, you're right. Really, really well, really well told. Best, best, one of the better screenplays you'll see. Yeah. Um, one of the better like editing. Like I'll give that to Brian Singer. Um, in terms of the, how he directed it. Um, we'll get to the final scene later because that's yeah. probably one of the better scenes in the past thirty years. But um, yeah, it's out there. But um, the first first thing that first thing that really kicks out or stands out is the lineup scene where in the in there. Yeah. When they're in there. Um, I mean that's that 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 still of them in the lineups yeah. kinda come like become like an iconic shot in film. Yeah. Apparent apparently, apparently yeah. that was like the inspiration for the movie, like seeing guys in yeah. in a uh police lineup. Yeah, it's pretty lit. <laughs> well I, I do love too how um how like after the fact the um Kobayashi, the lawyer, um tells them how it was they there it wasn't like a random lineup. Yeah, how they were all put there on purpose because of how how they have wronged, yep. wronged Kaiser you've, Soze. You were all past. stolen from Mister Soze, but he he was the reason that you don't know it was him mm-hmm. is because you're still or you're still alive because he doesn't know you didn't know it was him. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's dope. And Fencer, the a lot of the reactions are real for his the way that he was talking. Like, yeah. Nobody had a clue about what he was saying. Oh yeah, I saw that too. So uh, a yeah. lot of the characters, or a lot of the actors, were like, "What the fuck is this dude saying?" That was cool to see a yeah. young, a young Benicio del Toro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, I know, like the um, the scene where he talk, where he reads the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like how that was a genuine reaction yeah. from the rest of the actors. Yeah, that was pretty dope. Another scene that was real was um, when uh. When the red foot dude flicks his cigarette in his face. Oh, he, yeah. He meant to, he was, I think they were supposed to have him shoot it at, like, his, at his chest. chest. Yeah. But it hit him right in the face. And he, that was a real reaction. So I when you go back and watch that, I totally look for that scene. Um, but, yeah, I, that that scene really sticks out to me. And then you can kind of see – I really th- I think it's really done a really good job in terms of um, Gabriel Byrne's character. Like, you can see on his face how badly he wants to push away that life. And as they start to talk and talk and talk and that's in that cell in the first place, yeah. you know, he's telling, he's telling McManus to shut the fuck up because he doesn't want to get enticed into a new job. But then his wife brings him out or his girlfriend bails him out yeah. and they're all standing in the street just looking at him with de- like a straight face because they know, they know that he's going to end up yeah. doing it. Cause like once a, it's like a once a criminal, always a criminal type yeah. of tagline. You can't, you can't escape your past. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's interesting. I like that. I also love Cal- Kevin Pollock's character. Like, there's some really good one-line zingers out there. Yeah. Like, uh, you, do you know what? Is it like, do you know what you do? What happens if you do another turn in the joint? And he says, "Oh uh, yeah, fuck your father in the shower and then have a snack." Yeah. Are you, you gonna, gonna charge, charge me, dickhead? dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, yeah. They, they, I think it's they did a they did a good job of like creating characters that like can play off each other. Yeah. But and aren't like similar. Yep. Um, and then they obviously casted really well. I think. I mean, I think the only, the only, the only, um, probably character that could have gotten recasted, and I wouldn't have cared that much, is uh, McManus. Like, I feel like an, I feel like a lot of actors could have played that role. Yeah, I would have been fine with it. And, yeah, that's true. Uh, but I think he really went for it. Like he mm-hmm. really went for it. Like um, no, I mean, yeah, he, he was that good first at it. scene that he's talking. He does the lineup. Yeah. Um, he just like give me the fucking keys, you fucking cocksucker. And he goes, ah. Yeah. <laughs> like he's yeah. he's he wins for like um or like mo- biggest effort and, and yeah. Um, but not uh, not saying that like no yeah I I think I would be able to I would be fine you know? with that too like who would you recast him with then yeah who uh, who I recast him with yeah who's at that time I don't even know dude because he because he was like an up and coming yeah. actor at the time what was that ninety five. Yeah, dude, I don't know. Brad Pitt? Nah, I think that would have been... Too much. Brad Pitt would... Because Brad Pitt was already elevated at that point, I think, because he had 12 monkeys, mm-hmm. maybe. I mean, but that was the year he did seven, so... Yeah. I don't think he... He, like, he can't be the main... He can't be the main guy in a Fincher movie what and about, then be uh What about Joe Pesci? Nah. 
I bet she would have been too old. And he's too small, I think, for that role. He's too, you mean he's too big no, in terms of like, fame physic- to be Physically, there. I, think too, like, I think he was... Well, I'm thinking that McManus isn't that... I mean, what's his face? Baldwin's not that tall. Yeah, but like I think... So I'm thinking Mc, of like but, a guy that's like really feisty and short. Yeah, so but I think... Uh, nah, cause, but because Baldwin was like younger and he was like... Because he had to do like some physical stuff for it. Yeah. I could see that. I don't think I think Pesci was too old. I don't know. I was just thinking like I like that was the only character that like didn't really that I could like wouldn't have bothered me if it was another actor playing that character. Yeah, yeah, I get that. You know. But yeah, I uh I'm a big fan of how they kept it ambiguous. Um right when you knew, right when you saw Fenster die, like when he was dead. Yeah. And he tried to run, like they all started to get pretty serious about it. Yeah, then they knew they had to uh Yeah. Like, that's when Gabriel, Gabriel Byrne, who before was just said, well, why don't I just kill you right now, to the uh, yeah to the lawyer. And that's when he kind of said, because you could see his on his face, like, I think we should just do what he says, because he starts digging the hole for Fenster. That's yeah. when he kind of clicks into, all right, let's just kind of full send this boat situation and yeah. get the hell out of this thing. Yeah. Um, but it's funny, like, it's, it's really weird that, like, I mean, I guess it's like a thing at the time, but, like... It's it's hard to believe that all of them would just go along with that. Yeah, no, I, yeah. But then, then once they do kill Fenster, it does it make was, a difference because they, yeah. it seems like it's real. But then they get back at him because they get him in the in the elevator. That that seemed a little too easy. I feel that like scene. like that like if if he was like this if he was the lawyer for this character Kaiser Soze who's like godlike. Yeah, like, I, I feel like they got to him way too easily. But yeah. at the same time, it could just be and Kaiser that, Soze fucking with right, him. and that and that should be able to to prove my point. Where like, how can you how can you trust them? You know what I mean? Like, if you can get to this guy that easily, yeah, you know, even after they kill Fenster, granted, yeah, but like, if you can get to him that easy, then don't you think that maybe he's really just putting on a facade, um, and he's actually just a regular lawyer? But that probably doesn't got, that probably doesn't even pop, that thought probably doesn't even pop into your head at the time. Yeah, that's true. Cause, you're, Cause you got a dead friend and you're yeah. trying to get back. Yeah, I get that. Because you got a dead friend, you're seeking vengeance. You know Kaiser Soze knows who you are. Right. So anything you try that goes against the tide, you, you're as good as dead. That's true. Um, but let's talk. I mean, let's talk about like how big, how big, um, Kevin Spacey was in the '90s with this. Yeah. Because like this, this kind of like started. It started a huge. Started run. his like four or five year trend when he had. I mean, because he won. I mean, we'll probably get we'll get into it now, I guess. But like Kevin Spacey won what best supporting actor for this role? Uh, yes. So yep. yeah, so he so he started off with this, went into Seven, which is another iconic movie, yep. an iconic film in cinema. So many great scenes in that movie that he's in, and then going into L.A. Confidential after that, I believe, mm-hmm. and then ending with American Beauty, which he then wins his second Oscar for, which is also a really good movie. But I mean. Right. Um, the one thing I will fix from earlier is that I think he got most of his fame from Glengarry Glenn Ross, which was 92. Okay. So he was already on that radar, but still not big enough. Yeah. Um, and also Alec Baldwin was in that, so that gives him that or that that start at that point. But so Bal- at least that Baldwin. Alec Baldwin or his brother? Alec. So at least the Baldwins are on the radar. Maybe they were trying to get his brother yeah. involved because they knew he was a little bit of a different animal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 95 comes. He wins for this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he goes into Outbreak for '95 as well, which yeah. is a pretty relevant movie not for a, the time. Not a, not the best, not the best. Not a, be not a really, not a well received movie critically, but it is a popular movie. Yeah. So yeah, he definitely gained notoriety with that as well. Yeah, and he was like a third. He was like a third or fourth person on that on the list of um, of uh, famous actors. It was Dustin Hoffman, Rene Russo, and Morgan Freeman. Yeah. So he he was third in line for that, and then. He goes seven, a time to kill. L.A. Confidential, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. So that's number that's number three right there. And then he was in the Negotiator. I don't know if you've ever seen that. No. With uh, Sam Jackson. Um, he was in that. What was he in after American Beauty? I think there's a movie he was in after that as well. Um, he go. Uh, Pay it forward is pretty popular. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was Outbreak or something. I don't know. But he I was in Beyond the Sea. I don't know if you've ever seen that. 
I Kevin Spacey was in that. Yeah, he's Bobby Darren. Beyond. Like oh the, wait, uh, no, I, I was. I'm thinking of a different movie. Uh, and then from there, he goes to Superman Returns. Oh six. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, I meant twenty one. I don't know if you've ever seen twenty one. See twenty one. Yeah. He's good in that. And then from there, you know, does but his thing. Even then, if you look at his uh, IMDb page, the four is like you know how it lists like known for. Yeah. The four movies are the four we just covered. Yeah. In like. 95, 97, 99, 95. Yeah. So. That's his prime age. And then, you know, in his more recent years, this brings up a big conversation. And it, it's 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 like this movie. that This is the movie that kind of has that X factor. Um, because, you know, he gets his, accused of all this stuff. And so does Brian Singer. Brian yeah. Singer is on a different level in terms of it actually happening. Like, he's actually, I think, really canceled now. Um, I think, I no, nah, I think Kevin Spacey is more canceled than Singer. Might go hand in hand. Am I? Am I? Like, because Singer's done movies after his allegations. Because his allegations were what in like 2016, yeah. 2017. What has he done since then? Well, he did a po- He did Apocalypse in 16. Oh and yeah. And then he did um. Uh, let me see. He just did a movie like it wasn't a good movie, but he directed him. He did a, oh he did um dude he did he did Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh shit, you're right. So yeah, I I I dude, Kevin Spacey's definitely more canceled than Brian Singer. I mean, dude, okay. they, they ruined House of Cards. Oh, yeah. Of, I don't I mean, want to yeah. talk about it. I know. Um, yeah. yeah that, that brings in the conversation. Anyway, I, it doesn't matter. Either way, it brings into the conversation of separating the art from the artist. So yeah. that's why I kind of, you know, you want to talk about this movie as one of the better ones of all time. Um, and, you know, film critics and, and, like, film classes will break it down in terms of storytelling. And I don't want it to get lost in the mix of movies that are, you know, have all these characters or actors in it that have been since canceled. You know what I mean? So like, well, it was just it was just spacey, right? It's spacey, but yeah, at the yeah. time, I mean, at the time, neither of them was in that realm. But since then, yeah. it's been. I don't think it'll get canceled. All right, good. I'm just, I mean, if it was, so like movies like, um, uh, like Seven would never, Seven never, because you know it's only spacey. And well, what movie is there like something you're referring to, like an instant? No, I mean, I just think that this one has two people in it that are so far gone canceled at this point that I don't, th- I don't I, want it to get like, like, I don't want AMC to not run it because I haven't, they get, yeah. you know what I mean? They get like this flack from people that has two people on it that got these assaults against or these allegations against them. I want them to take the artist away from it and just see it as an art piece, you know what I mean? Like, as a whole, that movie, this movie is like, like top twenty of all time. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't think that's. I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to make sure of it because, you know, um, I mean, look they, at like, um, like, look like with Harvey Weinstein. Like he pro- he produ- he was yeah. great as a producer on basically all Tarantino movies. Yep. And I mean, Tarantino has received backlash not for like, not for like sexual assault or anything but he's received backlash from like people accusing him of pushing like his act his actresses and actresses actors and actresses too far right but even though i don't think like i don't think i haven't seen an instance where like a piece of art like you're talking about has been canceled because of the actor associated yeah. i haven't seen that yet so and i don't think it's something that we have to worry about with this particular movie yeah so um, and the only reason I understand that, your point. Yeah, I mean, the Weinstein stuff is a little bit different because he's kind of in the background. Um, you know, if someone was like, oh, Weinstein Company, that's not just him, it's his brother and his, you know. Wasn't his brother accused of stuff too? I don't know to the same extent. But yeah, I mean, either way, so I, that, I think it matters to the extent. Right, yeah, whatever. Being, being accused, being accused. Yeah, of course. Um, but I think it's worse to have an actor in it because you see his face and you recognize the name and you've seen him on tra- trial. Yeah. And it's like, Instead of being in the background like a producer or a, or a director, you have to see this guy's face. Like, and he's been in roles like American Beauty that have kind of been almost too close to home for his personality. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, that's just why I want to make sure that it doesn't get like, the art actually doesn't get canceled because the artists are. The so ones you're, that you're do. I think, I think what you're taught, I think what you're based off your love of House of Cards. I think you're. You're still upset about that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. Like, I... They just... It's... I don't know. I, I think mean, I've, I think I've gotten was... too many bad endings in the last few years. 
And oh, it's poor, like, poor maybe you. All maybe right, I got relax. a bad taste in my mouth. All right, Jesus. well, you did Game of Thrones, all right? Like, you yeah, know, but like, and then Star Wars, like, come on. So just just finish everything when you can. Yeah, you but know? this movie's like, all right, this but this movie's been in the past. Like, I know. this movie isn't gonna. Yeah, I think you're fine with this movie. No, but I'm saying this is what I'm saying. So like, I know I what I, I know what you're saying, <laughs> and what you're and but you're, you're just applying like other stuff to it. Fine. Um, like I get you've you've had bad experiences with <laughs> with, with content you've lo- you've loved in the past, and I mean I never watched House of Cards, but I know it, I heard it ended pretty badly. Yeah, well, I just en- ended as in they wrote him off the show and then tried to do it with Robin Wright by herself. Well, at the, and it just I mean, didn't work out. but they did it like at the time. Like I, I feel like they kind of had to, right? Yeah, because this is when like the allegations first dropped. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, we'll move on. I, my next category is, and I wrote this list down myself. Um, where does this movie stand on the all-time plot twist movies of all time? Oh. Here's my list. Ready? Hold on. Hold all on. Right. Uh, this isn't in any order. Just the, just the way I thought of it. All Go, right. Um, Departed because of the at the end. Yeah. Um, Donnie Darko. You ever seen that? Didn't like it that much, but okay. Yep. But yeah, that's that's got like a crazy yeah. aspect to it. American Psycho. Mm-hmm. Um, Seven. Okay. Fight Club. Okay. Uh, Shutter Island. Okay. Uh, Get Out. Okay. Gone Girl to an extent. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Six, a lot of fin- six lot of, Sense. A lot yeah. of Fincher movies. Yeah, Six Sense. Um, Prestige. Memento. Yeah. And, yeah, that's that's my list for I'd now. I'd probably put this top three. Yeah. Just of all movies, like plot twists. Okay, so there's, so there's, you gotta think about it like this. Did you expect it at all, uh, and how did they execute it? Because well, it's, it's hard for me to say like, did I expect it? Because I saw, I knew what was going to happen going in. Because I saw the movie in like 2012. No, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you were watching this for the first time, what is your level of expectancy to, for it to be him? You know what I mean? Like, I think for the first time I saw it, I just was like blown away how they approached it and did it. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't super surprised that it was him, but I love the way that they they like, did it. And so it kind of like puts yeah. it on a different pedestal because they just like, they really helped, they like left the meat on the bone until the very last second. And then, you know, you have everything culminating to that one scene and then you, you, you know, like they do some of the voiceover and they do back in Skokie with that barbershop cart- quartet yeah. and they have it on the wall and, and it's, just, it's just so well done. It's that... like, it's like the scene, it's like, the, all, like every Nolan movie has that scene where like everything comes together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. kind of like that scene. Yeah. Uh, did you say, did you say Memento for your yeah, twist? I said, you yeah. didn't? All right. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I would say, honestly, Prestige, Prestige and Memento both have that, like, level of what the hell, how did that happen, you know, like, Prestige is, is the fact that he was killing them every time. Yeah. Spoilers. I think uh, my top three, um, it's just, it's hard because I I saw a lot of these movies knowing what, knowing what already happened. Yeah. Like, I saw Shutter Island knowing what happened. Yeah, I did not. I would probably put, my top three would probably be this, Fight Club and Shutter Island. Yeah. Not like movie wise, not like the best movies, but I think plot like the best plot twist in terms of like something you didn't see coming. Yeah. And like execution wise. I think the sixth sense, the first time I've ever seen that, um, me walking out and being like, Wow, I did not expect that. That one's probably my top because Yeah. I mean, just just a total what the fuck. And then I the um the Fight Club one where he's actually Tyler Durden's not actually there. That's just that's that was crazy. That's just crazy. It's so like yeah, because like I mean, dude, like the, he's the like, amount of stuff that he did to himself. Like he beat yeah. his, he beat himself up so many times. Yeah, I mean, he. I mean, they show it. We'll talk about this another time. But they show him like beating himself up in front of the boss. That scene. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And then at the end when he's actually doing it the whole time, which is fucking crazy. But, I think I think if we were able to see this movie when it came out in theaters, not knowing anything that happened. And seeing it, and then what, like, just seeing it like organically. I think coming out, we would have been blown away. Yeah, I and mean, I, still, still am, but it's like you can't replicate that feeling. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I don't know, and it might be one of the one of the reasons that it stands so high on the list of top movies is because yeah, you know, um, it just has like this level, this different level, like um, like the rest of the, the movie itself just builds and builds and builds and builds and then at the end that it just really ties everything together um so definitely one I mean, of the reasons end, that it's the best ending is like i think the ending when like the realization scene where he's like like he said he, he's running over 
what Verbal Kent said. He putting every all the pieces together, and how that coincides with like yeah. Verbal Kent's um his like gamping walk into like a, just a like a regular like human pace. Yeah, like that shot is like yeah that one shot of the best. Is... That's yeah, that shot is crazy. And uh, Chaz Palminteri's reaction, um, very human, very like down to earth. Like yeah. totally would have that reaction. If I was him, just like mouth open, run out there because you know you fucked up. Like, and then he as after right after he walks out, the uh, the car goes the, by. No, the uh, the fax comes in of the sketch from the yeah. from the burn victim, yeah. and it's literally shout out to early career Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah, you right. Know? Doesn't this, it doesn't get enough credit? This dude, this dude comes out and shoots shoots. He makes five shots and has twenty rebounds. Like this dude is a fucking background all-star like he talks like really fast in the phone like he's like like natural yeah. he's a total natural it's really cool um but uh one thing i will say um about that last scene is like you know what what happens about what happens when um what happens when uh chas palmentary goes back into the office i don't know <laughs> But we'll, they'll probably he'll probably go he back. Picks in, up the the facts. These are the facts, and he's like, "All right, we got got played or something." I don't even know. Like he, they, like they, like this dude's supposed to be like, like he's from New York. He's supposed to be like this big shot. Yeah, he's like a ghost kind of. Thing. Yeah, it's kind of like the boogeyman, almost like it's kind of like too. He's too. Yeah, the stories are too like insane to be seen. Like it's like actually a real person. Yep. Um. But yeah, I'm sure. Imagine, imagine they did a sp- like a sequel to where it's literally just that. It's yeah. just like the aftermath of it. Yeah, that like, would be sick. Like Chaz Palminteri gets fired, and then he goes after him on like his own like independent rampage of trying yeah. to find him like as a, like an independent contractor. Yeah. Um, and you can you can call it like the, I don't even know like the un- <laughs> the unusual detective or some shit. Oh, like that. all right, <laughs> that could work. Pitch pitch that to uh. Now we gotta find a young Chaz Palminteri actor to play. What do you mean? If we if we redid it. Oh, you mean like like or a if, we, if, if if you made the sequel? Or you could do, yeah, you could do him like ten years later, and you can have him like, you could have him like living in like this like like blacked out unit, like no windows, and just have this huge like wall of like connections and pictures and like shit. Like the uh, how this guy ever got the best of me, and he's like trying to go after him, like. Yo, like, like and it's always sunny. Yeah, like yeah. Pepe. <laughs> Pepe Silva. Where's Cosa Sosa? <laughs> oh man. I wonder, I wonder if that scene was inspired by it. Ah. Uh, Pepe Silva. Pepe Silvia. Pepe Silvia, Kaiser Sosa. I don't think so. Well, because there was nothing like that in the movie. Yeah. It could have I don't know. Um But yeah. Overall, yeah, overall, um, I mean, yeah, like I saw this movie, I think, probably. I was like probably thirteen or fourteen when I first saw it. Yeah. And even then, I just like it just resonated with me a lot. Yeah. And like even to this day, like watching it again, fantastic movie. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. So I think that's all we got for tonight. Also, Chris Corey won for writing that year. Okay. All so right. I don't know exactly who he beat out. We can talk about that another time. But uh, he definitely beat out David Fincher. If he wrote, I don't think he wrote that one, but. That isn't a movie that I would give best screenplay. I don't know. Well, he definitely. Who wrote that movie? Fin- oh, Fincher doesn't really write his movies. I... It's Andrew, Andrew, Kevin Walker. Oh, it's based off a book. That's why. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I it think was, it must have been adapted. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, Seven didn't even win anything. They got nommed for the for best editing. Well, so. we'll talk about Seven another time. Yeah. Because that's a movie we definitely have to do. Um. Right. Is this so? Before we get before we end it. Um. Is this like in your top ten, top fifteen, top five? Where is this uh, rank in your top three movies? Do you think, at least now? All all in all in all, probably top twenty. Yeah, I'd I, say I, the same. After seeing it so many times now, it, yeah. it takes a little bit of bite away from it. But like that's just because like ten years ago when I first saw it or whatever, yeah. it was like top ten. But then since then I've seen a thousand movies, so they've probably gotten a little bit further down the list. Well, you know, it's, it's not like I want it to be down there, but it's yeah. just like I just think it's a it's a movie that like, um, you know, the the great scenes are really really great. Yeah. But other than that, there's not there's not nothing really there's not really a wow factor to it. You yeah. Know? 
So, I was, but like, it's a great movie because when it is good, it's really, really good. Mm-hmm. And everything else is kind of just like muddled in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Like, it doesn't really resonate with you anything else besides like the big scenes. Yeah, so, that's I, yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. So, but. I'd probably top 20 for me, but we can make our list later and yeah. f- figure out where it lies. Um, Right. I don't have I don't have a movie planned yet for next week. Oh damn! So I we're gonna. Forward to that. I know. I I haven't thought about it yet. So I want to be a. I want to. I want to. I don't want to repeat like actors or directors yet. So I might right, try fine. to find something new for us to do. Something new you haven't seen or. Uh, maybe I don't know. I haven't seen. We'll fi- I'll figure it out. That's fine. All right, but stay tuned for next week. It'll be a mystery, and we'll see you back, guys. All right.